I don't know if you can see the disgust on my face. The Tom was already on the ground. He was down in there. I guess you can figure out what happened next. He's gone. Getting ready to go into game lands. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna just still hunt. We've got some high winds here this morning and some very wet conditions. So I'm gonna make sure I'm walking into the wind. That way I'm downwind of any bucks. And hopefully we can slip up on a good one. Okay, to catch up to speed with what I'm doing, you know, when I'm still hunting, going into, into the woods, and I'm on national forest, it's a heavily pressured area, I'm going to go to the area where I think I can maximize my effort. So I'm going into areas where I know there's a good amount of food source, especially it's late season food sources. So the area I'm going into has got a good amount of mass crop. It's got acorns in it. So basically I got in there, it was still dark. I'm in the area that I want to hunt and I just wait. Once it gets daylight, I'm just looking around and you know, do I see any deer? Do I see any movement? And I'm looking for those horizontal lines like I've told you guys about before. You know, the trees had the vertical lines, deer had the horizontal. And lo and behold, to look up on a ridge above me, I see a silhouette of a deer. It turns out to be a doe. So I wait several minutes, you know, actually I waited, you know, probably 10 or 15 minutes. No buck came out and she ended up just running off. So that was location number one. So I went to location number two. Now remember, the goal is you got to see the buck before he sees you. So it's not how much ground you cover, but how well you cover the ground, okay? So I'm walking, you know, three to five steps and I'm waiting three to five minutes. Sometimes I'm taking less steps. Sometimes I might take a few more. Sometimes I might wait even longer. But you're going into these areas and you're trying to find the buck. You're trying to locate or see the buck before he sees you. So I went to location number two and it was just a deep holler, okay? The first one was the ridge and that doe was pretty close to a bench that I've hunted before. So I get to this holler, I'm looking down inside it. I wait a few minutes, you know, five, 10 minutes. I don't see anything, so he's back out. So now I'm going to location number three. Now, as you can see, we're still hunting. It's a lot more aggressive. You know, when I, when I think about stand hunting, I think hunting in a stand is passive because you're actually sitting there, you're not doing much. I mean, you can grunt and rattle your uh, some antlers or whatever to try to bring a deer in. And that makes it a little bit more aggressive, but for the most part, you're sitting waiting. You're basically going to ambush a deer when he comes in or a buck when he comes in. Now you can make it more aggressive by moving your stand into a bedding area, but still yet the act itself of stand hunting is more passive. So still hunting is very aggressive. I mean, you're just, you're on the same level as the deer and you've got to be super, super cautious because I've said it before, deer are a prey animal. So they're always looking they're always listening and they're always testing the wind. So I'm going to location number three now. And I'm just doing the three to five steps. I'm waiting, I'm looking, waiting, looking. And I keep easing forward and I'm finding a lot of good buck signs, scrapes and things like that. But I'm going to an area where I know there's food, a food source. And lo and behold, as I go to the area, I hadn't even got there yet. I'm probably a hundred yards from the area where it's got this food source. I've stopped and I'm looking around, I'm looking around and something catches my eye, ends up being a buck. Now you gotta remember, I'm using my GoPro, you know, when you're doing this videos yourself, especially when you're still hunting, very difficult to get good video footage, okay? So you'll have to look real close to see the buck, but he comes in and I catch him before he catches me. And then we do this little cat and mouse thing for, you know, a few minutes. 
he ends up running off because I passed up on a shot that I had. I had a good shot. Well, I won't say it's a good shot or I wouldn't have passed up on it. It's a freehand shot and my crosshairs just weren't steady enough. Okay. And I didn't squeeze the shot off. I didn't want to just wound him. So I let him go. He was, had a mature body on him. He had a wide rack. And I said, you know what? I'm going after this buck. So that's when the fun starts. Okay. On this next clip, you'll notice I've got the arrow set up. And the buck's actually moving to the left and he's gradually just going out of the top rim of this holler. And as he moves, he's moving further away. So I'm having to readjust and it's fairly thick through there. So I'm easing up a few yards, trying to get closer to him, trying to get an opportunity to get a shot. And then when I eased up this second time, I actually stopped the buck, got him in my crosshairs, but it just, just wasn't a good shot. So I elected to let him go. And you'll see in this next clip, you actually see his flag go up. Came a little bit out of breath. I was stalking this morning and went to three locations. The first one, I got a doe on the top of a ridge. You could just barely see the silhouette. Stayed there for about 20 minutes. Moved to the next location, didn't see anything. And I was on my way to my third location. And when I stopped, when I'm stalking, you know, three to five steps, wait a few minutes, look around. I saw a pretty nice buck. He looks like he's on a mature body. He's got a wide rack. <laughs> Unfortunately, I stopped him and I was freehand and I had him in my crosshairs, but I was moving just too much. I'd rather have a solid rest. So I let him go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to track him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get behind him and I'm going to go as fast as I can now. I don't advocate running with a rifle in your hand or anything like that. Then I don't recommend it. But I'm going to get after this deer. I'm going to track him. And when he slows down, and I'm going to slow down. It's, the ground's still wet. So I can move pretty quick without making a lot of noise. If you go straight, there's another huge holler about 400 yards ahead of me. If I can get there, it's got a real steep face. I think on, on the east side, I might be able to get a shot, but it's a gamble, but it's worth taking, uh, taking the risk. So I'm gonna get after him. I don't know since I'm stalking, if I'm gonna be able to get this on, on video or not, but we'll, we'll wait and see. I just shot a buck. And I'm over a mile and a half up here in National Forest. And this is the same buck that I hope I got him on video earlier. He was uh, sneaking through the woods. I don't know if he's looking for does or if he's getting ready to start feeding or what. But I went to an area where I thought there might be some deer. He's got downwind. But this is what it looks like. And he actually came out up there. And up there is where I made the shot. He ran across and I didn't see him go out. So I always memorize the last location I saw the buck and he should be right up in there somewhere. So I'm gonna give him a little bit of time, even with a rifle, you know, typically with a bow, if I know it's a good shot, I give him 30 minutes. Bad shot, you know, anywhere from an hour to four hours, depending on how bad a shot it is. But with a rifle and I had a good rest, I was leaning against the tree. So I'm really confident of the shot. So hopefully we got us a buck up there. Looks like it. it's a two and a half year old and I'm hoping it's the same one that I saw earlier because he's fairly wide. I mean, and for us, that's like I told you before, you know, in my area, if it's, you know, 80, 100 inch buck, you better shoot it. So I did, and it looks like he's probably 14 and a half, 15 inches wide. And for me, and for this area, that's really good. Obviously there's some bigger deer in here, but we'll take him. So we're gonna give him a little bit, and I'm gonna ease up through there. And there's a, probably some deer trails going back. There are actually some does that came out. And what happened was I spooked him, jumped on his trail when he ran off because I passed up an earlier shot. I was just moving too much. It was a freehand shot and I didn't want to risk it. Got on his trail, tracked him up here. And as luck would have it, two does came out 
and evidently he got wind of them. He made a 180 and just started going back in the opposite direction. He ran right back into me, and I was just below where he was at. So I was lucky to get below him. If I'd been, you know, dead even with him, he might have seen me. But the wind was in my favor, still blowing in my face. So he knew, never knew I was here. So like I said, we're gonna give him some time, then we'll get up there and see if we can't find him. So we're gonna try to pick up his trail. He was standing right in here before my GoPro runs out of disc space. So he was right here. And I saw him run off. He had his tail down and I know the last spot I saw him, he's, I saw him right over here. So I'm trying to hustle up here. And I waited till I got to a, a tree. That way I had a good rest. I'm gonna put my gun against the tree and had a solid rest. Uh oh, here we go. Kicked up leaves right here. And here's a deer trail. Looks like he might've been right there. All right, so I come through here. We're looking for blood. So I tracked him probably 300 yards. Uh-oh, there's some more tracks right here. Now sometimes you don't get blood. <laughs> oh, we don't need to. Look right there. It's like I said before, there's no law stating that once you shoot an animal, it's gotta immediately bleed. I'm gonna look around and we know he's right there. I'm not seeing any. I'm not seeing any at all. Looks like this is where he came. Well, there he is. And by the body size, I'd say this is a two and a half year old, but he didn't bleed. That's the exit wound right there. There's the blood. He just basically came right here. Here's some blood. And he just stumbled back down because he's facing the way he came. Hope we still got some video. Let's flip him over because I shot him on his right side. Yeah, there's the entrance room right there. He was going uphill, so he went through. Came out there. And you can tell it was a lung shot. May have got the heart too. So, I'm on 3,000 acres of public land. So, got a good buck here. Trophies in the eye of the beholder. This is a public land deer. Been hunting all year. So, we'll definitely hold out I got one more tag. I got to get this buck tag. But here, here's a here's a key to you for you. Is in this case, I had a solid rest. I knew the shot was good. No blood. Watch the deer. And I've got a little acronym, and I'll give it to you in a tip later. Watch the deer, and make sure you see his last point before you lose sight of him. Because if you can't find any blood, you can always go to that spot where you saw the deer last. And you pick up the trail there. So I just followed his tracks and then we ran right into him. And here he is. I'm thinking he's, uh, you know, it's it's hard to tell on the age of the deer. But I'm thinking this is a two and a half year old deer. Uh, he's broken the tips off both of his beams. I don't know if he did that fighting or rubbing trees or, or whatever. But uh, it's rifle season. And as I said before, I heard a tremendous amount of shots this year. So there's a lot of people packing deer meat in the freezer. So they don't have to pay for those exorbitant meat prices. But you talk about a rush. You want to go back old school and get aggressive? This is aggressive style hunting. You're one-on-one -on -one with the deer as you're stalking through the woods. You're basically competing against his nose, his eyes, and his ears. And he's in his domain, and you're the intruder. So 
you know, I basically, like I said, I basically just got downwind. I went to an area where I knew there was deer, and I was lucky enough to have this this buck walk through. So I'm really pumped up about it. You know, anytime you can stalk and shoot a deer in conditions like this, uh, especially on public land, it's, it's awesome. So nice trophy, uh, good memories. <laughs> I'm a mile and a half <laughs> from the access point and the weather's getting cold, but that's, that's just too far to drag it. This deer is probably 160, 170 pounds. So I'm going to quarter him up. I've got all my stuff to pack him out with. So I'm going to pack him out. So we'll see what happens. Uh, as far as the rest of the season goes, i got one more tag. I'm going to get this deer tagged before I move him, before I cut him up. And uh, we'll ease on out of here. But really good hunt this morning. I hope you like this video. We finally got one down. It's been a tough season this year. You know, hunting in Kentucky, hunting in Ohio. High expectations there and haven't seen anything. And, you know, biggest deer I saw this year was a six point. And this is actually a six. But I don't think this is the same deer that I saw earlier with my bow. Like I said, I got one more tag. And we'll see what happens. Just enjoy the view. This is mountain hunting. I'm over 4,000 feet, probably about 4,500 feet in elevation. <laughs> and in my opinion, it's as good as it gets. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.